All right, where do we go the moment we die? Now, I'm going to start off by showing you a false teaching. All right, and essentially this young gentleman here is going to call Jesus a liar. There's no other way around it. I get asked this question quite regularly. Do we sleep after we die, or do we go straight to judgment, or do we go to be in heaven? What happens the moment we die? It's a good question. Now, some people will propose that when you die, your soul is asleep all the way until judgment day. But I think there's five biblical reasons why that's not the case. Now, your body, yeah, you can say your body's asleep, it's in the ground, it's decomposing, but not your soul. Reason number one, Paul says in Philippians 1.21, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. All right, so let's follow these verses here. Philippians 1, All right, because he doesn't believe the Bible either, and I think that's part of the problem. When you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands, how can you expect to understand it? It's rather simple. Verse 21, For to me to live in is Christ. I'm sorry. For to me... To live is Christ, and to die is gain. I'd much rather depart and be with Christ for the... Oops. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. For that is far better. Paul wasn't looking forward to dying because he'd be asleep, but he knew that when he would die, he would be with the Lord. Also, we see in 2 Corinthians 5 8, Paul says that he would. 2 Corinthians 5 8. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord much rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. It shows that when you die, your body stays here in the ground, but your soul goes to be with Jesus. Th uh, that's unbelievable. Uh, to say that, it's completely ignorant of the entire Bible. It really is. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. One thing that's important to understand is that when you are born of God you have God in you you abide in God and God abides in you you're not absent from God right now if you are born of God you're not absent of God right now third reason in Revelation chapter 6, it talks about people who have died. When he opened the fifth seal. Alright, Revelation 6, verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar of. I'm sorry. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony of which they held. I saw under the altar, this is the altar in heaven, the souls of those who'd been slain for the word of God and for the witness they had borne. They cried out with a loud voice, O so And they cried out, I'm sorry, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou not judge and avenge our blood? on them that dwell on the earth. All right, so real quickly, let's go. Let's look at a comparison verse. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth. So what's this in reference to? 
shall God not avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? <clears throat> I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Now consider. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though we bear long with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Okay. Revelation 6. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord? Holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Notice that? These people are not asleep. They're in heaven asking God, How long, O See, Lord? See, he just went and just said to hell with what the scripture says. Now he's defining things that aren't there after he just plainly read it. How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? There's no mention whatsoever of people ascending to heaven. None whatsoever. Lord, until you judge and avenge our blood. So they're not asleep. They're very much conscious and awake. Uh, so again, <clears throat> he says they're not asleep. They're very much conscious and awake. It's not what it says. Nowhere does it say that. He's adding to the prophecy here in Revelation 6. And if, you, if you've read the Bible, you ought to know this is very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And here we have this young kid. He's saying to hell with what the Bible says. I'm going to echo and parrot what I've heard other men say, and then I'm going to repeat that to my viewers. Not understanding, not understanding the, the dangers of that at all. Now remember what I pointed out here. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth. So again, this lack of understanding is an example of somebody that lacks faith. It's incredible. It's incredible. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And here we have a young gentleman adding to Revelation 6 things that are not written there very very dangerous and uh, what some of my favorite verses here let's just go to one here the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom fear God if you don't fear God how can you expect to gain understanding. 
a good understanding have all they that do his commandments his praise endureth forever the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding all right, so let's try to understand this not I don't, don't listen here let me rephrase that I don't want to try to understand the false teaching let's try to understand the truth Jesus said to the thief on the cross today you'll be with me in paradise All right, Luke 23 let's go here Luke 23 Thirty forty three Luke twenty three forty three And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Jesus does not lie. He does not lie, not even a single time. He who knew no sin became sin. Let's confirm this, okay? Let's see. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus is not sinning here. Okay? He's not sinning. He's not lying. As this gentleman here is presenting all right ignorantly of course and I'm gonna show you not today you'll be asleep but today you'll be with me in paradise see again he's adding things that are not in Luke 23 see he caught you caught that right he added things again that are not written in the scripture Fourth reason, Jesus said to the thief on the cross, Today you'll be with me in paradise. Not today you'll be asleep. He's adding things. All right, I'll give you one example here. Um, let's see if I can find a verse here. Now to Abraham and a seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many but as of one and to thy seed which is Christ now compare that to what this young fellow says not he's saying not on the cross today you'll be with me in paradise not today you'll be asleep not today you'll be asleep all right so he's making a similar type of statement that we read here in Galatians 3. Now to Abraham and the seed where the promise was made, he saith not in the seeds as of many, but as of one unto thy seed, which is Christ. So here it says he saith not. It's it's showing what he's not saying. In Luke 23, it does not make that kind of statement that this gentleman is making. He's adding things. Dang you'll be with me in paradise. He's adding things that he ought not to be adding. Not today you'll be asleep, but today you'll be with me in paradise. Alright, again, that's that's making Daniel out to be a liar, that's making Jesus Christ out to be a liar. It's being fully ignorant of the entire scripture. And if you don't know, you ought not to be teaching these sorts of things. Now he's confident because he's putting his confidence in what other men have taught. And his eyes are closed to the truth. And that's 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 the trouble. And so that's why I'm presenting this video. Jesus gives a story of a rich man who went to hell and a poor man. All right, Luke 16. in the bosom let's see if we can find it here 
in the bosom of Abraham and Abraham's bosom excuse me all right and um, let's see what's he he starts at 22 okay and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom the rich man also died and was buried and in hell he lift up his eyes being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom and named Lazarus who went to heaven and it describes how when they died they were immediately taken to these places it says the rich man was in torment and the rich man in that torment cries out to Abraham saying send someone back to my brothers that they may not come to this place of torment meaning those people were still alive on the earth so it was before judgment day so what happens at the moment you die your soul goes to be with Jesus in heaven if you're trying uh, right there he just added added something that is not in Luke 16 at all all right and the here in uh, what is it and beside all this between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot and neither can they pass to us that would come from thence no mention of heaven if you you would think that if this was you know, one half was in heaven you would think it would be mentioned wouldn't you let's see how many times it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail that's the only time <clears throat> that, that's the only time it's unbelievable okay so you would think that if this was talking about heaven that it would be just very plainly stated as such but it does, it's not and the reason why it, it cannot say this has taken place in heaven aside from the fact that it's not the reason why it cannot say it is because it would conflict and contradict the rest of the Bible alright now I'm going to show you if you're an unbeliever what happens to your soul it goes to the place of punishment in 2 Peter 2 9 it says 2 Peter 2 9 You're just randomly pointing out verses and then adding to them. That's not how this works, man. You're just saying to hell with what it says, and it's, it's really, isn't that exactly what we read in Genesis 3? Yea, as God said. Let me tell you what God says. I mean, isn't that really the same attitude? Where are we at here? Second Peter two nine. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Is that what you're? As the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment. Notice that under punishment until. And this somehow means people are in heaven the day of judgment so they're getting punished even now once they've died and then they'll get the eternal punishment forever afterwards similar to what do you think um, what do you think God is down below the earth sticking dead people with pins is that I mean just be honest is that what you think Similar to how a criminal gets arrested by the police and gets put in prison even though he hasn't gone to court yet. So God can already put people under punishment if they don't trust. And Jesus, awaiting their trial date, awaiting the day of judgment. Once Christ returns, which we don't know when it's going to be, but he will come back, he then raises everyone physically back to life. That's when you receive your new body. That is when people get judged and get sent to heaven which will then be the brand new earth or to the place wait a second they get sent to heaven 
they were already in heaven and they got kicked out of heaven and then sent to heaven they're in heaven they get they're in heaven they get sent to heaven place of suffering called hell for all eternity the lake of fire there's no such thing then as soul sleep when you're absent with the body you'll be at home with the lord and that's why as christians we don't have to be afraid of death you can look forward to it because we know what's on the other side but make sure you're ready for christ's return because he will come back and you're ready when you place your faith in jesus that he took all the punishment for all of your sins. And in the meantime, between now and the time he returns, let's go and tell others about him, so they may eagerly await him. Okay. All right. So he's right about faith, okay? Not a good job, but man, this kid has some growing to do, doesn't he? All right, first of all, let's go, um, uh, just to sort of recap he's saying that when you die you go to heaven and not true at all <laughs> and that's that's insanely ignorant now I remember um, in 1997 four years before I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ I had actually read John chapter 3 and went to a church I got invited to a church service on a Thursday and they were talking in tongues not not uh, foreign languages but just in gibberish blah 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 and then the pastor was throwing oil on people ruined my clothes and um, <clears throat> made a big speech about how his mom was in heaven right now watching over him and I knew that was a contradiction to what I had read in John chapter 3 but here in Acts chapter 2 uh, if I can let's see where's this verse at right here it is in verse 34 for David is not ascended into the heavens wait a second this fellow here says when you die you ascend to heaven you go to heaven same thing but here the scripture says David is not ascended so well, he must be in hell and the throne of David must be hell and the Lord that sits on the throne of David must be Satan I, I, mean, I don't think you guys realize anything just repeat what what some other man said and to hell with what the scripture says when you consider what the scripture actually says and compare it to what these men teach it's night and day man it's night and day it's night and day until I make thy foes thy footstool now this goes back to Genesis 3 right and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel until I make thy foes thy footstool see Jesus is gonna stomp his foot on the head of the serpent destroying all evil forever and ever okay this is a prophecy all the way back to Genesis it's from Genesis to Revelation all throughout the Bible and here's another confirmation of it okay but consider that David is not ascended to heaven now what's it say in John chapter 3 what I was referring to or alluding to earlier is Jesus a liar should we no longer trust what Jesus says and put all our trust into this 19 year old kid 
And no man has ascended up to heaven. Verse 13. No man has ascended up to heaven. So, according to his words, nobody has been saved. Uh, it's just so strange, man. It's just so strange. It really is. Very, very strange. So you have to say Jesus is lying in that... What do you say about this one? And you just have to ignore the scripture, don't you? In Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to sh shame and everlasting contempt. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. You know, we read numerous passages about people being sleep, meaning that they are dead. Okay. Oh, I'm not sure I'll be able to find a good example of it. Yeah, I should have studied this a little more. Oh, ah, we can find it here. Let's see. Oh, I should just let this one go, huh? Let's go. Let's see that. People now. Be the best example here in John 11. Yeah, howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Oh, yeah. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Alright, again, this is another example. Is Jesus lying? Is he ignorant? I mean, why do we got to trust him over the Lord Jesus Christ? I really... Because what he's teaching here is contrary to the Word of God. So now we're faced with this dilemma, if you will. Do we trust what this young man says? Or do we trust what the Word of God says? Howbeit Jesus spake of his death. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. But Jesus was talking about his death in Daniel 12. Many of them asleep in the dust of the earth, okay? And so I know uh, people that don't believe the Word of God will say, well, you gotta go to the Greek and the Hebrew and the Aramaic, and you gotta combine all three languages and shove them up your nose, because I don't understand none of them. In other words, if you don't believe this is from God, then you don't believe God. Right? I mean, how can you say this is the Word of God if you don't believe it's the Word of God? Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. So there's an easy way to understand all of this. There really is. And um, so let me just 
try to help somebody here. Alright, so if you think of our life as a book, alright, first page is when we're born, the last page is when we die. Okay? So, once our life is complete, that book is written. Alright? So, that book will not get opened again until the great day of the Lord, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Alright, now, there's our books that have been written and then there's the book of the lamb that was already that that was written and that is the life of Jesus on this earth he is the only one that has resurrected and ascended to heaven now those so he's the only one worthy to receive eternal life now the only way for us to have everlasting life is if our name is written in his book our books are not good enough his book is the only one good enough so when the end of the world comes and it's judgment day <clears throat> okay if our names are not written in his book we will not receive eternal life I, I, it's this idea okay I mean this it's really simple right so let me end on this let me end on this thought here okay let's just play out this idea all right so his idea and what so many others this is not his, he didn't come up with this on his own okay like I said he echoing what he heard somebody else say let's just logically think about this all right so people according to the, this guy and his and his buddies or whatever when you die you go to heaven your body is on earth but your soul goes to heaven now at the end of the world your body resurrects from the ground from the grave your body resurrects and but your your soul is in heaven so that body that resurrects is your dead body okay so what you have is a bunch of zombies walking around on earth while you're in your soul is in heaven your body your resurrected dead body is on earth it's why I call it the zombie doctrine. It doesn't make any sense, man. This is the like the book of the dead stuff. It's completely contrary, contradictory to the word of God. <clears throat>